Good morning, everybody. It looks like we're on live. Um, I'm going to wait for a few minutes for people to join in. I'm very excited about today, friends. It's going to be a great day. It's very nice and sunny. We've got two friends. Please remember to check in. I see Andrew's mom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jacob's mom just called me. Hi, Stephanie. We're so excited about today. Jacob's mom just called me. They're trying to figure out the best place to see the parade. Remember to check in. Good morning, Monroe. Hi, Gray. Um, as most of you know, right after this, I might even end a little early so I could drink some water and coffee, and then I'm going to your house. Aren't you excited? I'm so excited. So, Monroe, I think I could get the rock. Oh, Officer Herrera is supposed to be in the parade, but I'm not sure if he's going to make it. It's up to the dog, the John, if he's going to get up. But Monroe, when I come to your house, we can take care of that. Oh, I'm so excited. Hi, Gray. Good morning, Stephanie. Andrew is here. Thank you. I just spoke to Jacob on the phone. Jose! Jose's mom. Um, I'm just checking. You gave me a new address, correct? You just give me thumbs up uh, in the chat. Jose Escutia's mom. You gave me a new address than the one we have on file, correct? And it's a long street. It's I know where both of them are. I grew up around uh, Bellbrook, actually. Uh, good morning, Eric. I'm so excited about today. Can you tell? As soon as we finish our class today, we're going. Okay, awesome. I'm going to come by your house today, Jose. I'll be there. Um, and I'll let you guys know what's happening with that. And I'll tell you what's, how we're all excited about it. Um, okay, Jose, thank you for that. Thank you, Mom, for that, uh, the new address. We'll talk about that, too, because you're actually in the Birch area. But we can talk about that. Don't worry. Santiago! And Santiago lives so close to Ileana. And did I know that Zoe lived right near Jennifer? I didn't even know this. Like, next door. Nobody ever told me these things. Um, good morning. Good morning. Just checking. Now, I, I stuck. I was, I'm kind of getting a little better at this. I put a little um, copy in here. Hi, Christopher. Chris's mom, I got your message about today. I still am going down Bellgate because I'm going to be here Hornbrook and Harlan to see Julian and uh, Monroe. And there's another person over there, uh, Eric. Eric is over there on that side. Good morning, Faith. And anyways, Christopher's mom, even if you're not there, Chris, I'm going to leave your specials. I'm going to leave your specials. We'll talk about the specials on Thursday so that those that um, see, we can talk about what's in there. Um, Faith is here. I'm so glad. Um, Lucas. Now, a lot of you guys, Santiago lives near Ileana, who lives right around the corner there from Lucas. Um, you're welcome. So if Chris is not there, what, that address I have on Bellgate, I'm going to leave it there. I hope he's there because I'm going to take a selfie. We're going to explain all that. I'm so excited. And then by the time I finish, I'm going to go back to the school because I have to be there a little early because uh, we're going to get ready to do the parade. And my understanding, friends, is the way the parade is going to go, I sent you all the map. If you need it again, please let me know. It's on the website, Walnut Eagles. We're going to go out on the street towards Olive School where the bigger kids are, and then we're going to go around the back of the school so, like, we're going to go towards, like, where Monroe is out there. Mr. Um, Rangel from fifth grade, he and I are going to be together. You'll hear us. <laughs> and uh, hopefully the police officers will. Remember, friends, we talked about we have city police. That's, like, you know, Chief McLean. That's um, Sergeant Real, Lieutenant Huerta. That's Officer Camacho, Officer uh, Herrera. 
All of those are heard by cops from the city. And then we have school police. Those are the ones that govern city, or excuse me, school. Those school police are the ones that are going to be starting the parade. But if any of my city officers come, because I'm going to be out there, um, they'll be near me. Okay, so you'll see them near me. Um, they're supposed to come. I invited them to join us. But we know we have to follow the rules, so that's why we have some police with us. We're going to be going around the back of the school. We'll come back on La Santa Street, down La Santa Street, around back towards Stewart. And then we'll swing our way back there where Lucas, Santiago, I call those the cul-de-sacs. So when you back over there, we're going to come back uh, through there and then back to Walnut School. So if you don't live right where the route is going, you can meet us on one of those little corners. Please bring a hat or something because it's going to be a little um, sunny and a little warm. You will hear us. We're very excited. So basically, I'm going to do my lesson. Thank you, those that have checked in. I've got um, people who have checked in, but I don't know if they're watching right now. And I know that I just talked to Jacob's mom. Jacob lives right here, friends, around the corner from me near the donut shop. I didn't even know that. Right near Abigail's, um, her auntie. Um, and then near Mr. Borges. But friends, um, we're going to do our lessons. We're going to, um, right after that, I'm leaving because I got to take all the specials and I'll meet you there. Good morning. Hi, Jameson. Jameson is on. Good job. After that, I'm going to go to your house. I'm going to bring you something special. Uh, and then I will hopefully see you during the parade because we're going to go all around. Those of you that live near um, Los Angeles Street, not towards the side of Walnut School, but down. Uh, so I know Jameson lives right there. Um, and then also on that street, our lady would be Eric. But this, you guys can come up towards Los Angeles Street to see us. You'll hear us for sure. Okay, I told you we're gonna see if the police officers join us. Right at the beginning where I said good morning on the chat, I put a link for Google. Um, it should be, uh, we did a little song for you and we put it on the Walnut School website, walnuteagles.net. So if you can't link on that later and see us just sing, uh, you can go on Walnut School, walnuteagles.net. You can see us. We put it all together for you. And I want to give a little clap for Mr. Duran because he did all of that cool stuff for us. And um, those of you who are on social media, Facebook and Instagram, I have an Instagram and I have a Facebook. Um, I linked it on there as well. And I made, I am private, but I made that public so people could see it. Um, other than that, I'm so excited that you are all here. We're going to be covering a little bit of our vowels. We're going to be covering our vocabulary, the writing, reading a story for sure. I'm going to add some stories onto this link later on, friends, so you could come back and read the stories because I'm going to talk to you about it. The other thing, friends, about our math. We're coming to the end of our book. Some of you might say, I don't remember doing all the book. But Mrs. Macias and I and Mrs. Uh, Garcia and La Maestra Molina, we uh, have some other activities that uh, are going to be preparing you for uh, first grade. So they're good things about the numbers that we're going to work on. Excuse me, I'm touching my nose. Um, and that's going to be, and that's going to be, um, if you do do that, remember to sanitize, friends. See how I touch my nose. So um, we're going to be sending those papers to you. I will probably probably send you from now on those maths through email. So so please be sure I have your email. I've been recording them on your feed. Now most of you remember, Jameson, I had to make one for Jameson because I, I never was able to get to, a lot of you remember this, I'm making all my notes. This is how I know where you live. And this is how I marked it all out. I gave this to moms right at the beginning. Some of you, I just had to make it for them. Uh, Sophie as well. So um, this is what I'm going by, okay, today. And then I'll add your email on there too so I can send you the math pages. Emma is here. I'm coming to your house, friends, right after this. 
Let me mark who's here. I see that Bernice is here. Thank you, Bernice. I see that Emma is here. Did I know that all of you live on Los Angeles? Not all of you. A lot of you live on Los Angeles Street. Some of you are neighbors to each other. So I have Andrew, Stephanie, Monroe, Eric, Santiago, Christopher, Faith, Lucas, Jameson, Bernice, and Emma. I'm so sorry. Well, no, you guys, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here, Emma. So we're going to try to go over whatever we can today. And then right after this, I'm going to your houses. I'm so excited. I hope you're ready. It's going to be quick, though, because I have to go to other friends' homes. I have some specials for you because I've missed you. Inside is some fun stuff. Inside is a little book that's going to, like, help you prepare some activities, moms, that you can work on. Some of them we're going to be doing together uh, in class. Uh, and then I'm going to be sending some other of our new math papers will kind of look like these, but they are activities we need to practice, especially the bigger numbers, working with those, okay? So from now on, we have three weeks left. We're going to be working on that stuff. I'm picking it out, not of this little, little book I'm giving you, uh, but from other ones. That's what Mrs. Macias and I are going to be doing for you. So friends, I'm so excited. I'm so excited that you're going to hear me and see me. And I'm going to be with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ronghel. I'm going to be carrying something. See what it says? Love you. And then sometimes I'll even flip it and it'll say, you are awesome. Okay? I'm going to be over at your home. I just want to go over quickly the, the vocabulary. That we have, I need to use my glasses, friends. Can you believe that? This is what's happened. This is what's happened during this time. I have to, I have to look at, I have to use this. Um, our letter this week, friends, was the long O, which I did last week, if you remember. I couldn't believe I did that. So friends, just as a little review, the vowels. We have five vowels. Do you remember the song? A E I O U A E I O U. Help me. A E I O U A E I O U. These five vowels are in every word. You've got to have one of them, at least one, in every word. Like I said, even if you have the word A, it's an A. You got the word I, it's an I. You have to have at least a vowel. You guys have them in your um, name. Maybe that's going to be one of your thoughtful activities coming up, writing your name, not just your first name, your last name, and finding those vowels, finding those vowels. Our vowels have a long, have a sound that we already know, like our picture cards. A is apple. A, E, A. Remember? A. I'm sorry. I didn't. A, A. I is insect. I, O, octopus, ah, U, umbrella, ah, those pictures that are on the picture cards that we use in class, that you might even still have a copy of because I've given it to your moms and dads, those are the short sounds, short sounds. In your little kind of activity book, that's going to be with your specials tape, uh, those have some activities with short vowels. And they could work on it, sounding out the words. This is a good way of putting the sounds together. If you if you see, oh my gosh, they're getting the sounds, and they need a little practice just blending them or reading it together. Cat, cat, cat. The little activities in the book that's in the specials today that I'm bringing you is a good little fun activity, okay? Now, we also said the vowels have another sound. It's the set, the name sound. Sounds like the name. A sounds like A. Cake. I sounds like I. Bike. O, which is the one we do this week, sounds like O, like a cone. The other two, E, will sound like E, like tree. You sounds like you, like it's cute. 
next week's month, we're going to see our letter U, like in cute, or flute, or blue. We're going to see the U, and then we will look at the letter E. We'll see some others. Now, when we talked about the vowels, the letter O, we used a sound spelling. Remember, we had to fill in the blank. That's just the way they spell it. They call it the sound spelling. So we have the letter O, and then a letter, and then U. Sometimes there's a letter in front of it, OK? This is the pattern, or the spelling pattern, that we could hear the, loud, the sound of O. Pone, bone. All of those words that we had talked about uh, before last week when we had talked about it, bone, home, joke, hole. We talked about those. You gave me a list. Actually, Miss Ayala has it in my book because I keep it. So if you remember, friends, we talked about the letter O. Cone, bone, rope, tone. Joke, zone, home. And then we also said sometimes O by itself. O by itself gives just O, like in. Read it with me. Go, so, no, bow. Remember, bow is my friend from LMU that played basketball with Hank Gathers. Remember? My friend Hank, who played basketball, but he passed away. Remember, I told you about it. Now, a really fun thing I want to tell you guys, I had a little visitor yesterday, and I'm so excited to tell you about it. Uh, Andrew Vince Cruz came to my house. He came. We took a picture, and his mom brought me food, and I said, ah, but I was in some needs, so she brought me some food, and we were at a distance. We were at a distance. Um, we talked for a while. We heard some music. Um, and I want to show you. And thank you for the food. It was fried chicken, which I haven't had in a long time. And I loved it. So I wanted to show you guys. Here's Andrew and I. I think you can try to see our cover. A little closer. Because that's my house in the back. <laughs> So he did see my chalk. So I uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing that. And then last week, friends, if you remember when we were writing, I wrote about my friend, um, Nene. Well, he was actually outside. So Andrew actually saw Nene. <laughs> and I said, Nene, this is Andrew. I was so excited. So friends, in our sound, we've been practicing the letter O. And next week, and you guys have been giving me those words. So thank you. Next week, I'm watching the time. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Vince Cruz. She liked my, my home. Um, and remember, friends, we're trying to keep our distance from each other. So, um, okay, I try to keep our distance. So um, I, I, I won't be coming too close to where you're living, but I will not going to go blow my whistle so you'll hear me. Friends, when we were talking about the long vowels, Please remember to have that quiet E at the end. You're welcome. Emma's grandma got my video message. I hope Emma got it. I sent it to grandma too. So um, in our vocabulary, friends, our story uh, this week and what we're talking about is something that I remember Monroe talking to us about before. And it's something that Mr. Vargas talked to us about when he came to read. He talked about water. Water as a natural resource. Resource is something that can help you. So um, maybe when you're writing, a resource, something that could help you, would be your list of words. That's something that can help you. Or if you're like, oh, I wish I had the alphabet with the pictures, that's a resource. That's something that can help you. So a natural resource. Natural is like nature. Remember we talked about nature? Nature is things that are outside. The grass, the flowers, the rocks, the trees, the air, 
the clouds. It's natural. It's out there. Remember, friends, moms and dads, this is what we've done before. Because your, your boys and girls like to collect things and put them in their pockets. And they like to bring them inside. But we know that's part of nature. So a lot of times they'll show me. And then we, we decided to put nature back. So natural is like nature, friends. It comes from outside. So a natural resource is something you can use, but from out there. And I remember Mr. Vargas talked a lot about the water. It is really a great natural resource, friends. Uh, it, well, it's obviously it's something that can help us live, but a lot of people use the resource or the nature, the natural resource to help us live, to survive. It's Sergeant Rayal. I'm telling him good morning. Hi, in class. Hope to see you at the parade. Sorry. Remember, if they come, they may not be in a, in a marked, or what do you call it, a patrol car. They're in a special car because they're watching me. So if they come, I'll have to be sure they're behind me so you guys can see them. They probably won't all be wearing their uniform because they're, you know, special. Um, so friends, our natural resource would be water. Um, natural resource um, is actually even the air. Sometimes helps you uh, move things along so you can have electricity. These are natural. The trees are natural resource because from the trees, friends, the way that they are, inside there, there's wood. But those trees, friends, the way they like work with them, you are able to make paper. That is a natural resource. That's why, friends, when you and I used paper, do you remember when we were in the classroom? We had a trash can and we had the blue bucket. Remember? You remember? In the, well, this is mine <laughs> because I have my own. But remember the blue bucket? And we would use it for what? Recyclables. Moms and dads, your boys and girls know how to recycle. Remember in the blue bucket? Those things that you could recycle, okay? Because they could be used again. Um, so like the, the paper roll. Paper, this, the bottle water, but you should squish it. You should squish it down so it's not airy. Friends, what about our Kleenex? Trash. What about um, paper towels? Like, I recycled this, but the paper towels actually went in the trash. Okay? We know that anything um, that has, like, we know how to do that. We do that in the lunchroom cafeteria anything that has food in it if it has still food in it remember that that goes in the trash but the recyclables here because if they're a natural resource you can use them again okay especially like the tree like we said they make paper out of it um, so some of our words friends that we have with our natural resource is create we know that word we, we have creating time. What are we doing? Making things. Exactly. So we have the word create. Can you say that? Create. So when we're talking about natural resources, we can use them to create or to make something. Creating. We always had creating time. We didn't have play time. We had creating time. And we would make stuff. And we, would, we were very good at it. I miss that. So creating means that you are making something. And something we wanted to do and we never got to it. I remember some of you had it in your cubby. I wonder if I, it might still be in there because I didn't move anything. Um, we were going to be making uh, a way to travel. Do you remember that? And I said, you could create it any way you wanted. You could use the Legos, the magnetics, anything that you wanted to use. So, but I asked you, to think about it and you had to like make a plan or like Mr. Garcia came 
when he came to read, he talked about plans for talking about natural resources are designed or plans. Creating, create means to make it. Design means the plan. You can design a house. You can design a vehicle. Is it going to go up in the air, on the land, in the water, right? You can make a plan or a design. These are two words that we know. These are great with our natural resource. Because, friends, with natural resources, things out there, things out there in nature, you're creating something. For example, if you remember, I told you about Monroe, how he's making, he made that rock, and then he's going to give it to me for officer. He designed it from a natural resource, the rock. He designed it. He created it. He took his, what he knew, his knowledge, his knowledge of, you know, I know what a car looks like. I know what a police car has. You know, I know the letters Baldwin Park Police Department, BPPD. He took what he knew. So friends, when you are making something, creating, you have a plan, a design. So try it with me. Create, design, and you take what you know, your knowledge. You're taking your knowledge and you're making it. Another, well, the words they call are natural resources. I'm going to write it but I just explained it to you. It's something you can use from nature. That's a big, those are two big words. They put it together. Natural resources. Natural resources. Natural resources. From nature, resource is something you can use to help you. So I'm out there camping. It's really cold. Oh, I need to build a little fire because I don't have a heater. Oh, I could use a natural resource of some sticks and branches and I could make a little fire. But I have to be what? Act safe, be responsible and respectful. You don't want it to be like burning anything else up. Okay, so see our, uh, our behavior expectations. You could even use them every single day. You could soar everywhere. And our last word, friends, is to weave, weave. Now, weave means kind of like this, to weave. So if you're not going straight, hi Jacob. Jacob's here everybody. Jacob's gonna be one of the first people that sees me very soon, because he looks like I sit right here, I'm so excited. I told everybody, Jacob, you live near me. Thank you. So let me write you down that you are here. I'm so excited. Um, so weave, we're talking about our vocabulary words. Weave is going in and out. So if you were running out on the playground and you're like, oh, I'm not going to start right at the blacktop and run to the fence. I'm going to go kind of like a zigzag, but it's weaving. And when you weave, friends, another thing people do is when they're making something like um, maybe a carpet or they're making something with string. They kind of make a pattern and they're weaving it. So that is what I'm, I'm thinking they mean by the word weave. Um, you can get plants like long leaves. Um, sometimes people do it with palms and they weave them. They weave them. I have a little example. It's a little old, but let me show you what I mean by taking the leaf and weaving it. Some of us might get these palms. I got this at church, and it was a while ago, so you can see it's a little dry. Natural from nature, natural resource. And it's holy because this is, you know, before Easter and we celebrate. So some people take this and they kind of make it a design. So they kind of weave it. So I have this lady. I know her. She's the, uh, actually, I taught her daughter, Jessie Casas. And Mrs. Casas said, oh, my Esther, teacher, let me have that. 
And if you could see, she weaved it into like these little flowers. <laughs> she weaved it. She took a natural resource, something out of nature, right? And she weaved it like this. Do you see that? So if you guys in your yard, and I'm not saying tear off all your leaves, but if you see like a long leaf, even sometimes um, we add little string, little string. We add little grass outside with these little flowers at school. There's a way that, we haven't done that a long time. There's a way that um, boys and girls would stick them through and it would make a long necklace with those little white flowers at school. We haven't done that in a long time, but that's taking a natural resource and making something. So friends, let me put this, I don't like to put on the phone. So friends, our word this week, design, have a plan. Just don't go for it. Think about what can I make? Like when we were making our vehicles, when we started before we had to leave, you, you guys were having a plan. I had you draw it. I said, think about it. And then some of you are already in that part of creating it. You took what you knew, your knowledge. You took what you knew and you made, we're making your vehicle. Just like Monroe made his painted rock for Officer Herrera. Natural resources, natural, part of nature. Not, not made, these glasses are made, this shirt is made. Okay, all of these are these this book, these are these are not natural. Natural is stuff out there, nature, and it's a resource. The resource is something that you could use to help you. So it's a it's from nature and it's able to help you. It's a natural resource, like water, like um, director uh, Vargas came and read to us about about water and how they cleaned up that ocean, remember? And our last word was weave. Kind of like a braid, I guess, but it's weavy. Awesome, awesome. Friends, I'm just going to keep going now at this point. We're going to keep going. I'm going to read a story because I want to for sure do the story, and I for sure want to uh, talk to you about the math. In your specials that I'm bringing you, there's some fun stuff. Um, if you're there, you get to pick something special, so hopefully you open the door for me. This is not the number one story of it. I will I will link both of these books in here later on. Jacob just joined us a little bit ago. So I just want to remind everybody that right at the top of this chat, I linked in a video that Walnut teachers made for you. Walnut staff made for you. I want to thank Mr. Duran. So if you can't link it on here, be sure you go on to walnuteagles.net. And you're going to see the fun time we had just singing for you guys. Um, but this story and the story before it, because it has the same character, will be um, on this on this um, on this page and linked after. And I'm going to be adding some other books we've read. Friends, I'm going to be adding some books. You could just come back on some that we've read in class that I don't have them here, but I can link them so you can see them. This is called Chato and the Party Animals. Oh, we're going to have a party today, friends, out in the streets of Baldwin Park, okay? It says Chato and the Party Animals. I'm going to take the cover off. And it's written by Gary Soto and illustrated by Susan Guevara. Now, Gary Soto is a very famous Mexican-American. means he's Mexican, lives in Amer from America, um, author who wrote the story. He's written a lot of different stories, not just of Chato the cat, but of also um, different characters, even for older boys and girls. And he's a great, great, great author. Susan Guevara is a wonderful illustrator. I actually met her as well. Um, I didn't get a picture with her because remember, I usually stick the pictures in here if I met them. But this is called Chato and the Party Animals. My first story about Chato, uh, you will meet him in the one that I link in, in here. I like this because it has a glossary, so there's some Spanish words with English words. So if you want to know those. And I might just say them as the English words, too. You can see they're having a little party. There's some animals there. A party animal since he was a little kitten. Trato was catnip crazy to be at Chorizo's birthday party. Chorizo, his name is Chorizo, his friend. 
Somebody's next door had invited the whole neighborhood to celebrate the dog's birthday. You remember a neighborhood? Neighborhood we call what? We learned that a barrio, remember? So he invited everybody to come to his birthday party. The party goers played shake paws, juggle the mice, and toss the cat in the blanket. Um, friends, I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to be a little bit, uh, uh, we're going to be okay, we're going to be okay. Um, it's okay. Oh, look at their having a little party. Look how they're eating. It's set. Mommy Mouse served dog biscuits as appetizers. To be polite, Chato threw a couple in his mouth. What do you think? Chato whispered to Novio Boy. These are breaking my teeth, Novio Boy said. Chato swallowed his dog biscuits and sniffed the air. He said, I smell something. Try it. Poppy Mouse said, Chato uh, ate some cheese, but his friend, Novio Boy, hung his head out and said, no, thank you. I don't feel very hungry. His eyelashes were shiny with tears. He did not want to eat it. The cheese kind of smells. <laughs> What's wrong, Chato? Said his friend. Novio Boy didn't answer. Come on, cat, Chato begged. I'm your best friend. Birthday parties always do this to me. Said Novio boy. Por qué? Why? Why, dude? Why are you sad? Because I'm from the pound. I'm from the dog pound. I don't know when my real birthday was. I never knew my mom. I never even had a birthday party or nothing. Chato wrapped his tail around the shoulders of his friend. Oh, it doesn't matter, Novio boy. Who cares about things like that? It's okay. We could have our milk and we could have a drink of our milk and our cookies. But Chato could see that Novio boy did care. His best friend went home dragging his tail. So he wasn't, he doesn't know his mommy and daddy was, his, his owner got it from the pound. So he's kind of sad because he doesn't know when his birthday is. And his friend feels bad for him because he wants him to be enjoying the party. Poor guy, everybody needs a birthday party, Tato said to himself when he got home. Hey, I'm gonna give my friend a party. Tato telephoned Blanca's bakery. He ordered a large cake with mouse coloring frosty, and he put a couple of canary birds on top of it. <laughs> Tato licked his paws and called his friends to invite them to the pachanga. A pachanga is a party at the fiesta. He dialed up his friend, who a DJ, Sharky the DJ. He said, hey, home cat, you awake? I am now. It's Novio Bro's boy's birthday tomorrow. I want you to come over and spin some, some oldies but goodies. He wants him to play the music. That's so cool. You're going to hear music in the parade today. <laughs> the next morning, Chato made a piñata out of newspaper and an empty cat box. He picked up a cat and, a, and some party favors, the cake and some party favors. He bought some combs, flea coat collars, and shiny bells, wind up mice, some yarn. That was already kind of tangled up. He slinked over to the Mercado, which is a store. He bought some ice cream, cat crunchies, cheese and dog biscuits, and extra kitty litter just in case. Back home, Chato started a pot of beans, waiting for refritos. So he's making some um, homemade beans. And we have the beans, boys and girls, because I did this. Now that I'm home, I did it. I made some um, beans in the pot. But when they're whole beans, you can mash them up so they're refried beans. So he's making some refritos, some refried beans. He made some guacamole, fresh salsa. He pressed his pot prints into tortillas uh, to make them special. So he's having a big party. He filled water balloons and dragged the sofa out to the patio for everyone to jump on. He sprinkled cat and he had dog bones in the flower bed so the animals could have some fun times. <laughs> Don't you think, don't you think of uh, messing with me? He said, Chato choked in the face of the inflatable dog. Uh, he's playing with the, with the toy dog. The twins, Mas and Menos, were the first to get there, followed by 
Flirty, Samba, Pelon, Pelon stream outside, Peloncito. Chorizo came on into the patio with his family of mice on his back. Where's the birthday cat, said Chorizo. Tato's face was blank. Look at him. It means he's like, oh, no. Did he tell him? Oh, no, I'm so bad. I forgot to even invite him. I forgot to invite Novio Boy to his party. Chato nodded his head. Oh, let's go around. Let's go round up the birthday cat. He, he was so worried about the party, friends, he forgot. Look at He's going all around the neighborhood. All around the vecindario, the barrio. Friends, this is what we're going to do today with the party, with the parade. They barked and meowed and squeaked through the neighborhood. More cats and dogs and at least three mice joined the party. Novio boy was nowhere to be found. He was not in the sycamore tree on top of Senor's garage roof or sleeping in the on the warm car fender. All the places where he liked to just kick back and relax. Maybe he's hurt. Maybe he's hurt. Chato was worried. Get to the picture. I really like the dark colors, but they're showing you all the neighborhoods. See that? They checked the gutters. That's down here where the water goes in the street. They checked the gutters to see that maybe he got ran over by a car. And if it was flour or tortilla, he's gone, Chato mode. Oh, my friend, he's been kidnapped. Oh, no, maybe, maybe he's just lost, said Sharky. Kidnapped, lost. Masa and Meadow started crying, shivering from the from the fear. They don't want to be lost. They don't want to be kidnapped. They don't want to be run over. Back at Chocolate Place, the party animals sat on the patio outside. None of them touched the cake or water balloons or the blown up German shepherd. He said, oh, he was so nice and sweet. He was the best. I miss him. I remember when we used to hang out in the trees and pretend we were birds. And then I remember he was always a sharp dresser, courageous, respectful. He made me feel like I was important on a giant. And in his eyes, oh, his eyes, they were gorgeous. OK. Oh, I'm sorry, she texted me. Too, uh, it was Christopher, he had to step away real quick. Too bad, this guy is gone. He sounds like someone I would have liked to hang out with. Every cat and dog and mouse turned around to look. Who was talking? Oh, it's Novio Boy. He goes, you're not kidnapped? You're not run over? Who, me? I ran over and away, he said. I was I was at the dumpster. Oh, I was dumpster hopping. He was looking in the trash can. I was a little hungry. These two cats showed up with dirty faces over the fence. I told them that we should come over here. I said, there's always comida. There's always food at Chato's kitchen. That's his friend Chato and Chato's kitchen. That's the first story. So th that's the one I'm going to link in here, too, so you guys could see it. Chato sprang up, and he gave the signal for the grito, the yell. Surprise! Everyone yelled surprise. And Novio Boy said, yeah, it's, it's because of your birthday. No. Yeah, said Chato. You must have been born on the first day of summer. That's why you like to play so much. Novio boy grinned, full set of teeth. Okay, you party animal, Sharky said, let's dance. They're going to play some music. The animals ate and partied. They tossed water balloons at each other. They purposely missed each other so that the balloons would pop and their wet fur would get all wet. Then Chorizo taught them going to the vet where you had to spin your head off. He got the time, said Chato. All of them got a chance, but it was Novio Boy who
who on his third big league swing broke open the catfish piñata. Broke it open. After they say Las Mañanitas, if you remember, friends, Mañanitas is the a Mexican or Spanish, excuse me, birthday song. Do you remember when Miss Maricela came and her and her friends came and they sang Mañanitas to me on my birthday? That's what they say. After singing Las Mañanitas, Novio Boy cut the cake. He licked the frosting from his feet. He opened his present. This is the best birthday party I've ever been to, Novio Boy said. Before then, the dumpsters, Chaco said. Okay, you guys are my family, Novio Boy said. You are the best. They like to go look at his friends. But he's, these are his friends, his family. The pachanga, the party lasted until the sun went down. It was a long day. And the moon came up and the neighbors started throwing shoes at them to stop the noise. Novio boy overnight sleeping on a little cat cushion, his present from Chato. The coolest friend, the coolest canal, the coolest friend in all of the barrio. And this says, Samba, Pato, Pelon, these are all their names. Novio, Sharky, Chorizo, Mas, Menos, and Mas. Those are the friends' names. So this is called Tato and the Party Animals. I'm going to link it up after we come back from the parade. And I will also link up Chato's Kitchen. And I will also link up more stories from Jack Ezra Keats with our little friend Peter. Because we've already seen Peter, Peter's chair. And we also saw Peter in the snowy day. I hope you guys have seen that. I was getting some messages here. I just have a few more minutes. Uh, I do have a few messages here. Um, I'm going to be going with, um, we've talked about this before. Mayor Lozano runs the city with the other city council members and myself and Mrs. Contreras, we are part of that group for the city. But for our school friends, we have some school board members. Um, we have a president and a vice president and some board members. And so one of our board members, her name is Mrs. Robles. She's gonna be joining me to be coming to your house um, so that we, I can go and I can bring your things. Uh, she wanted to come and see all of you guys so we're going to be going shortly. I'm going to get my stuff together and we're going to be leaving. Um, so I should be to your home soon. I'm so excited. Um, I hope everybody is there. I kind of mapped it out. The last things that I want to take, uh, take care of. Remember, friends, if you are not at your address, I will leave your name on a baggie. The baggie will be clear. You can see what's in it. Some of the things are specials that I had. Uh, that I got for you, some of the things you could work with, some of the things, special things that you'll see it says the city of Baldwin Park. So it's really special. Friends, the, one of the last things I want to talk to you about today um, are our numbers, because we're going to be working with our members this week. Now, I told you that you can easily make a group of 10, and we were going to be working with 11 to 20. On Thursday, the activity is you have numbers 11 to 30, but they're all mixed up. They're all mixed up. You need to try to cut them out and to glue them onto the paper. Now, some of you might be saying, I don't have glue. I don't have tape. That's okay. If you can try to cut them out and at least lay them, just lay them in order. Si no tienes pegamento or uh, tape para agarrarlo, Los numeros, just lay them, take a picture, send it to me so I can see that you were able to put, excuse me, put them in order. We're going to be working with our numbers. Now, here we started, I said to you before, you don't have to start with number one. Moms and dads, you're going to get a paper, any paper, just like I've got here, just like I've got here. I've got my little paper with the towels, remember? I told you a long time ago, my neighbor, she sent me all that. And all I'm going to do first is just make a line, make a line, make a line. Now, this is the cool thing, mom and dads. Numbers 
and friends. Numbers are like, are just patterns. What I mean by that, it's just a pattern of numbers. We repeat that. So I made a line with 10 squares. You have to have 10 squares to see the pattern. Now, when you go to first grade, you already know the numbers. You've said them orally. Mom and dad, if they're having trouble with the remembering the numbers, have them start with one. Go back. Look at it. Ask them on the numbers chart. Ask them on the numbers chart. What's this number? 54. What's this number? 26. What's this number? 29. What's this? 20. These are my 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. If they're having trouble writing the numbers, this is a good resource, friends. You don't have to sit there and say, what's next? Use your resource, something that helps you. I'm not saying copy it all, but if you can't remember, what does 12 look like? 11, 12. Look at it and copy it. Today, I, I'm thinking, let's start really quickly with like number... Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Eight has only one digit, one little place. When you get to the 13, 14, 15, they have two. Digits. Remember, friends, eight. Come back if you stop. Come back and read it again. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, now you have to put a two because the group of 10 and the zero. How do I know it ends in a zero? I see it right here. Ends in a nine. This one's going to end with a one. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Why do I have a two? Because these all have two when I started with 20 until I get back. 28, 29, 30, 31. I'm going to stop right there really quickly. Right. Looking at the number, do you see anything the same? Do you see anything the same? I see, Miss Ayala, that these all end with eight. I see that all of these end with eight. I see these end with three. So this probably, sorry, this ends in three, this probably is gonna end in a three. Probably. Anything else? I see this ends in five. This is probably going to end in five. Something else I notice. Look at the first digit. One, two, three. <gasps> the first digit is getting bigger. One. Two, three, probably a four, ending in a what? One, 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 probably. 
How will I know? Let's fill it in before we go. Let's start at 20. When they're counting moms and dads, you can have them come back and start. Show me 24. Let's start there. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, have a point. 29, 30, 31, 32, 30, there's a three, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. I'm going to stop right there, friends. Remember what I told you. Moms and dads, you don't got to fill the whole thing up. I'm going to use this now. Show me 18. Show me 25. Show me those that end in seven. Once they write, moms and dads, you could use this for the numbers. Where's number 10? What comes before number 10? What comes after number 10? Before, after, not this, this was. You can use those words. Also, these are in groups of 10. We're going to be working with this. Here's 10. What's 10 more? 20. What's 10 more than 20? 30. Just doesn't have to be those. Where's 13? What's 10 more? <gasps> 23. What's 10 more? 33. So moms and dads were using what they wrote to help them know what's before, what's after, what's one more, what's 10 more. These are words that we're going to be using, especially going into first grade. So something as simple as this, don't throw it away, keep it. I could go back to the one I did before. I could go back and use the one I used before really quick before we sign out. Let's use this. What's five? What's 10 more? 15. What's 10 more? 25. What comes next after 25? 26. So you could still use this. You could use them, have them circle it like I did, point to it, put a bean on it, put a little uh, macaroni, put a little circle, put a button, make it a, a fun game, but have them show you the numbers when they're writing them. This is very important. So look at what I did, making sure everybody was here. I'm pretty sure everybody was here. I'm gonna link up the stories. I'm trying to cut it a little bit, keep it on time. Um, I will be coming shortly to your home. Friends, just to let you know, if you come out to the parade route, please wear some sort of hat if you can. Um, I want to hear you. I want to yell at you. I want to see that you're there. Um, I'll be at your home shortly. I'm just going to get the stuff together. Friends, remember, you're going to see my sign. Yay! I'm going to link up here the stories um, onto this link. Please go onto the website if you have any questions regarding the, regarding the lessons. Just let me know. Okay? Um, I love all of you very much. I cannot wait to see you. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call, give me a text. Boys and girls, I think we did a great job today. You'll hear me blowing my whistle. You'll see me. I'll be at your home shortly, okay? Okay, I love you, love you, love you. Bye. Be great. See you soon.